This might look familiar to you. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to Mate Get the Lake. This was from my dad's bundle. I'm going to show you how I made it. This is for Gogo, who asked for a video on how to make this little faux leather folio that I made. It's my favorite part of my dad's gift bundle. It's just a tiny little piece of experiment. And so today's video is all about how to make faux leather not only look like leather, but feel like leather. My goal with my fake leather crafty pleather is to have it be not only look like leather, but feel and act like leather. It's going to take a lot of steps. There's a lot of starts and stops and waits to dry. It'll probably be various days because this takes some time. But I promised Gogo I'd show her how I made Dad's little journal. So that's what we're going to do. Not the journal. The leather that covered the journal. The little, little leather folio. Mine is not rocket science. I'm sure other people have done it this way too. I watched dozens of how to make leather looking stuff out of paper. At least a dozen. And I took all the stuff that made sense to me, uh, that I had the supplies for and the patience for, you know, those are usually on short supply around here. And then of course, took it some more steps further because all of the ones that I watched ended with this, ended with a piece of paper and I have an old chamois. Uh, I've since long since gone to using uh, synthetic chamois for my car detailing, my auto detailing b business. But my old one from, oh gosh, late 70s, early 80s, uh, looked exactly like this. And I can't find it anywhere. Imagine that. Anyway, all of the other how to's stop at the paper when they get it looking like this they usually put mod podge this doesn't feel like it has any mod podge on it uh, but i'm gonna take mine a few steps further so if you want to stick around we'd love to have you so of course it starts out with craft paper and i was just doing sample bits because i was experimenting and so i have I had all kinds of little pieces like this where I tried this and I tried that and I tried different colors and I tried different products. Uh, and so I have just these little tiny pieces, but I would like a larger piece to cover a journal. And I have this really nice piece of craft paper, but as I spread it out, I noticed that it's perforated like paper towels. So, and we, we work, we, we crumple it, and we crumple it, and we open it, and we wet it, and we, you know, we do all kinds of things. This preparation, I don't think, will withstand that. So if I took two, and did my whole process, I think I would end up with two pieces in the end anyway, or three, because this is this has a bit of a piece of extra. So I'm just going to save myself the mystery and tear it in half on my own. So there's no surprises and no, <clears throat> no surprises. So as with most of all of the other ones, it starts with crumpling it, which is, oh, it's good stress relief, right? Sometimes, sometimes there's just not enough squeeze balls for certain kinds of stress, but when you open them, 
do it again so that the wrinkles get in a different spot. Smooth out. Oh, we already got a tear. Look you there. It's all right. This is old world leather. It's not new, shiny, never been used, pristine leather. That's not the look I'm going for. I'm looking for old, weathered, 200-year-old leather book. You may have to be just a little more ginger with it. Everybody seemed to do it in different steps, and I'm just going to do it in the steps that make sense to me, in the order that makes sense to me. I'm going to wet it a little bit, just with my, just give it a little spritz with some water. Not a lot of water. You might want to do both sides. Give it a little spritz. And the next step that I wholeheartedly think is important, this is just a moisturizing conditioner. Most conditioners have some moisture giving quality, some humectant in them. And so you just take a little bit on your hands, put it on the paper. And what you're doing is conditioning the paper you cannot the, immediately you can feel a difference in the texture of the paper what that is doing is adding rather than just water that's going to dry out right away <clears throat> it's adding whatever moisturizing qualities it has in the conditioner to the paper and it gets very soft a little bit more Add a little more water, just a little bit, not a lot. It's not dripping. And ooh, it smells so fresh and clean. It doesn't look like it's all over, but it feels like it's all over it. If you find some spots that don't feel kind of slippery, add a little bit more. That's it for the conditioner. I only put it on once. Next would be to add some color. I'm going to do different browns. I have melted chocolate, territorial beige, and the colors really don't matter. Dollar store black. Whatever browns you have will work. I must have really liked the melted chocolate. I have three more bottles in there, three more browns, and they're all <laughs> melted chocolate. <laughs> So uh, I have these two browns and a black, and I always add a teeny bit of blue to my blacks and to my browns uh, for a number of reasons, but because it just adds more life to it, it makes the brown come alive somehow. doesn't take much at all. So I'm just going to put a teeny little bit out. Add some water to the middle of my plate. Get my brush good and wet so it's easy to clean later. You see, I do practice what I preach. I do, I do. Towel right here, a t-shirt that I'm gonna blot off on. Get most of that water out. So I just want the brush wet down in here where the paint tends to gather. And that'll help clean up later. Make it a little easier. I want this pretty dark like this. We have not a whole long ways to go. In fact, this is a little, I would like this a little bit darker, a little bit more richer. Uh, more layers will do that. More layers will add depth. So I'm just gonna paint these. And from watercolor, this is acrylic, but it's water-based and it kind of works the same. In watercolor, I try to let the paint mix on the paper. This is wet. My paint's wet. Uh, I am i didn't mix a new color. I just mixed two colors together. And as I put it on, they'll mix. But there'll also be some just black and some just brown. But nothing um, too stark. That's what gives this this mottled, uh, you know, it's not all black, it's not all brown. 
it's it's varied hither and yon and that's the look that I would like if you want it more one tone even toned then mix your color the color that you want it personally I think that that makes it less realistic but you do what suits your fancy it's your project I need a lot more paint I totally underestimated this whole thing it's been a while since I did that little piece of leather I'll take a little bit of that lighter one and just add some of that in there for interest not too much because it's almost once I have it on here it's almost the same color as craft paper add more here and there and I wouldn't worry too much about brush strokes because we're gonna keep crinkling it and keep adding layers so I, I wouldn't worry a whole lot about that now that it's torn up it looks like bathroom paper hand drying towel which isn't nearly as cool as craft paper <laughs> Craft paper's way cooler. And I said in a previous video, it's our, we're trying to be cool here. That's our job here. We're trying to be cool. If you want, you can certainly leave some of the craft paper, the original craft paper, visible. I didn't anywhere else, so I'm not going to hear either. Maybe on the next piece. So she's good and wet. You can see all the different kind of colors all throughout. I'll lay this somewhere sort of safe to dry. I'm just going to do the next piece the same exact way. Mix my colors and put it all on here and let it dry. So I'll be back when the paper is ready. So look at me. I got all excited. I didn't put any of my blue in there. I didn't even touch it. Uh, hello. So I, I am going to throw some in while everything is still wet. Ideally, I should have done this all along. I don't, I just got so excited, just ahead of myself, ahead of myself, stupid. So I'm just going to do it now. Put a little bit of blue, mix right in with that brown and black that's already there. And because I don't want it shouting blue, because I don't know, I've not seen a blue cow. Alright, so... So, never too late. Well, I shouldn't say never. As long as it's still wet, you can go ahead and mix that some blue in. And it doesn't take much. And it will, and you probably won't even notice it. But it'll give it a depth. It'll look like shadow or it'll look like a deeper black. Our eyes are amazing at making up reasons for things and making things that aren't real look real. Because... We want them to look like they're supposed to look. It doesn't take much, but it will make a difference. And this is the second one, and I did leave a few edges, a few little bits and pieces of the original craft paper on the edges just to, just to see how it goes. And some. In the, it's so hot here. It's starting to dry already so I'm putting the blue in the shiniest spots this stuff and put it in my composition book of unused paint I'm also gonna put it in some other projects make some index cards with this stuff here and with a clean brush I'm gonna scoop all that brown back into the jar so we're back this is nice and dry now I jumped the gun a little bit. I checked to see if it was dry, and the first thing I did was scrunch it up again. <laughs> so once it was completely dry, uh, in fact, I tried it last night before it was all dry, and it, it uh, pulled some of the paint off itself, which is fine. We're going to put more coats on it anyway. It's, it's fine. Uh, I found, I'm very excited to say, you know, as you do when you're looking for something else, like my new bucket... I found my old chamois. Look at it. Finally. That's the chamois. That's my paper. That's my sample from before. That's my chamois. I mean, it's a little bit darker and a little bit more wrinkled. But holy Hannah. Right? Actually, I'm after a little bit more. This is, I think, just the hide 
of the skin, I think that's what the chamois is. Again, this is from the late 70s. My cousin gave it to me. He was an auto detailer and I wanted to get, I wanted to help. Uh, and that's how I got my start. He gave me this way back, way back before I knew any better. I was a kid. Uh, I, I never would buy one now. I use all synthetic stuff. I don't use animal parts if I don't have to. Uh, so this looks like chamois. And what I'm wanting to go for is more like leather. So the next step, this is where I think my take on it takes a bit of a left turn in that this is the part I made up. I didn't, none of the videos that I watched did this, these next few steps. They were going for a different look. Uh, and so here's where the new part comes in. I'm sure I'm not the first or the only to do this, but I've not seen it. So that's why we're here. It is thunderstorming like crazy out so you might hear some kaboomies and a lot of a lot of rain which is awesome i'm going to use my homemade mod podge for this step just because just mush it around i should have planned this a little bit better i got so sides sideways with the storm I, I get so excited i love storms well i just can't think straight some would say i can't think straight storm or not they're probably right now by what I meaning I, I should have planned a little bit better what I'm gonna do is a few times ago when I did my Walmart grocery order I ordered cheesecloth from Walmart and this is what I got it's Dritz so it must be in the in the sewing section rather than the food section it's cheesecloth I think medical gauze would work just the same if you happen to have some of that if you don't have cheesecloth or medical gauze, I think the the uh, parts you pull off from a napkin would work too. So there's all kinds of options. And we love options. I cut it to length and hopefully when I open it out, it'll be plenty wide. Oh yeah, we got cheesecloth coming out our ears. They're not any wrinkles or rolls. I don't want bumps and I don't want anything giving away our secrets. So I'm just going to place this on this wet and if it sticks out that's fine. I'm going to trim it up later. Get it right to that edge and just sort of pull it to fit. Let's stick it down. Now I have plenty, plenty left. So I'm going to cut that off. And just use a couple little pieces to fill in any big blank spots. I don't want blank spots. I don't want bumps. I don't want blank spots. Fussy, fussy, fussy girl. And again, just for ease and speed of delivery, I'm going to pour. Homemade Mod Podge. I think there's still remnants in here of my homemade Mod Podge from Thrifted Glue, and that Thrifted Glue had a lot of chunks in it. The effect was great, but holy smokes, was it a pain to make because of the chunkiness. Well, I make sure to get the edges really, really well. And if you pick up the gauze, try to put it back. Now I'm gonna put my second piece right on top of that, line it up. Remember, these were pre-measured. Of course, I had one little extra piece that I didn't account for this time, but that's all right. We'll figure it out. Smoothing it out, but of course there's going to be wrinkles. It's paper and it's wet and I've wrinkled it a few times. I want those wrinkles. I want that texture. The other side, let's see. It's not perfectly lined up, but that's all right. I can trim it off. It'll be fine. So that's it for this step. This is good and gooey. It's, and it's an all day thunderstorm, so it'll take a while to dry. And I'm good with that. So. Stay tuned, we'll be back for the next step. So we're back. I have glued my two painted, glued pieces of craft paper over a piece of gauze with a piece of gauze in between them. I used my homemade Mod Podge to put the gauze on and then to put the second layer on. You can see that it's really shiny. Uh, that 
you know, leather sometimes looks like that. Technically, you could be done. It's It's got a nice weight to it. It's, it's pretty hefty. It's very flexible. I think that it would be very strong. Yeah, it doesn't just tear super easy. Right? I wanted it to be more hardy. And we're there. I'm, you know, we're there. You could do a couple things at this point. A, be done. That's an option. Trim it off and make your project, whatever you want to make out of it. B, take a matte Mod Podge and give it some love. I would like to take down that shine a little bit. What I would do is mix Mod Podge with a little bit of my colors to, again, deepen that more matte finish. Now Mod Podge, even though I'm using the matte, matte, matte uh, version, it still has quite a bit of shine to it. What I've noticed with the, even, and this is, there isn't um, any Mod Podge on the top. The only Mod Podge is in, in between the pages. So what the shine here is, is from the acrylic paint. Acrylic paint dries shiny. Because I want to take it just a few steps further, and because I very rarely do I leave well enough alone. <laughs> I'm going to do a few more layers of this just to see if I can get it closer to real. I typically don't like to pick either or. I like both. And so I'm going to do two different things, one to each side, and we'll see how it goes. I did a similar thing for my dad's little book but because i was experimenting so much with so many different pieces i honestly not sure exactly what i did where and for that little book of my dad's i'm not ex exactly sure so i'm trying to recreate it and in the process of trying to recreate it as ideas happen you know you think of other things to do so we're just gonna we're just gonna follow this i'm out if I screw it up, I'm out a little bit of paint and some, a few little bit of products. Not a big deal. Because I left this extra bit on, and because I have this naked piece, and I think I would like that, uh, I'd like to have that option to use as a, as a fold or a flap if I need it. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is I have this beautiful piece left over from... I'm going to add this in there too, just because I'm still adding and I'm still gluing and it's never done until it's, well, it's never done. <laughs> it's never done. First thing I'm going to do, I have my handy dandy little gray. I got this at Walmart for 50 cents and it's been one of the greatest palettes. It's a nice neutral gray. I'm going to wet with my brush like I always do most of the water out and I'm gonna mix some this is just Dollar Tree black acrylic Walmart Apple Barrel Admiral blue I always add blues to my blacks and because it's the only brown I have Apple Barrel from Walmart melted chocolate kind of a medium warm brown trying to decide if I want to put the Mod Podge on that I know has a bit of a sheen to it, but it also has a sealer and protector that the homemade Mod Podge doesn't. Although, hey, hang on. So I had to make another batch of homemade Mod Podge. I used up all my thrifted glue Mod Podge that I made the other day. And so I have this brand new batch of Mod Podge. Elmer's glue, pen and gear Walmart brand Elmer's glue and I did throw a little bit of real Mod Podge in there and a little bit of Scotch Create permanent tacky white glue uh, because the Elmer's glue and the pen and gear glue these are for kids you know they're not permanent they're safe washable non-toxic three years old and up, so in case they eat them, you know, it, they're for kids, essentially. Uh, and they don't have the best sticking power. So I wanted some better sticking power, and this is 
this is a really good brand. I love their glue sticks. I got this just to try it. It's really thick, really thick. So I don't like using it in projects just by itself, but for this homemade Mod Podge, it was perfect. And like I said, I added some of my matte Mod Podge to this homemade Mod Podge mix to give it some of that sealer quality. So that answered that question. That's how I'm going to proceed. I'm gonna use my homemade Mod Podge because it has everything I need. A little bit less sheen than going full on with the good stuff. It's a little bit thinner. Uh, which is what we want for this kind of project. Uh, and so I'm going to put just some of this right onto my palette. And I'm going to tint my Mod Podge is my plan. So we're tinting Mod Podge because we can. There's no different here. This is all water soluble. So that's what we're going to try. Because I... I I'm trying to skip a step too, really, rather than just putting all Mod Podge and then painting it again. Might as well mix it all together and see how we do. So I'm mixing my Mod Podge right into my paint, mixing into my black paint. And it's gonna lighten it up because it's right now acting like a white paint, but of course it dries clear. So even though it looks funky, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Tiny bit of my blue in there. So we have black, black, and then we have brown. But look at all the beautiful color in this, what will read black. See how much more depth it has with the extra colors in it than just black. Okay, I got ahead of myself. I need Mod Podge on here so that my stuff will adhere. I wish I was a neat crafter. Oh, how I wish I was a neat crafter. And you can see my, my little clean space here, but there's crap all the way around my desk. I will be honest in telling you that. <laughs> I don't know, when I see other people crafting, I just think, oh, their whole life is organized. Their house is clean, their laundry is done, their room is immaculate and organized. And I am up to my arse in uh, bullshit. So I'm telling you straight up, that is, there is crap all around me here. It is not pristine by any stretch of the imagination. This is way more fun than doing my laundry and cleaning my room and doing the yard work and all that stuff. So here we are. So I got lots of Mod Podge on there. Stick my little piece down here. It's not going to be perfect because I should have did this way back when, but I didn't. I did not. I'm gonna give this a I'm gonna give this little naked spot here some of this color. I should have wrinkled it too and I didn't, but it's too late. I did not. So on this side, what I wanna do is put my tissue. Now typically white tissue when wet with the glue will sort of disappear turns invisible, but it leaves some texture. And that's what I'm after. So I did remember to wrinkle this up. I had this cut to size before we started. Look at me, all prepared and stuff. That hardly ever happened. And I'm just gonna put this down on here, just to give it that one more layer of texture and, and feel and the tissue paper on paper gives it quite a leathery feel. And look, now I'm going to take my paint and Mod Podge and just go over that. If uh, it seems too concentrated with one color, then just go in and add some of the other ones. Really, this it, it does take quite a bit of time, but it's really easy. You know, if you have a space that you can throw a layer on and let it dry until you have time to come back to it, you know, that's ideal. It's not difficult at all, it's just time consuming. I'm using the Mod Podge as uh, water to, to thin the paint out a little bit because there's water in here. In addition to the glues and the Mod Podge, there is a little bit of warm water that I mixed in there uh, to get it to meld together well. So I'm not using any water with this particular batch of paint. 
I don't know if you can see, but that's pretty black. But then it kind of fades into brown. So I'm going to add just some, some of the black over on this side. A little bit of blue. Because it's nice and wet, all these edges are just going to tear off so nice for me. I lost a little bit here on the bottom. I'm just going to pull back on. No, oh, just got to find this a place to dry. And I think <clears throat> doing this in the winter with the heater on would be way faster because, again, it's about a thousand degrees and it's supposed to rain again today. Probably won't, but it's nice and gray and very humid as if it's going to rain. So it's going to take a long time to dry. And that's okay. I got other stuff to do. We'll be back. So we're back. It's days and days and life events like crazy later. And this is now good and dry. I believe where we left off was that I had put a layer of tissue paper over my first layer and you can be done now i mean this this is plenty this is enough it's got a lot of body it's pretty leathery feeling you can be done now you could be but of course i'm not ready to be done yet because i have an experiment in mind this side has a layer of tissue paper with paint and mod podge mixed over the top my plan was to do a different layer on the inside. What I'm gonna do for this layer is another layer of cheesecloth, this gauzy stuff uh, for the texture. And just to see, this, this whole thing is really an experiment. And that's the same mixture that I'm gonna use again today to put this piece of cheesecloth over, not the tissue, but the plain side. So one side has tissue, this side is going to have, and you can see, you could just be done because this has a beautiful leathery quality to it because of the gauze that's in between the pages, in between the layers of craft paper. You can see a lot of texture, and so you could be done now. I do have one more step after this that if you want to be done at this point, skip to the end and see that last step uh, because I think it'll make a difference in how this feels and acts as well. So, but in order to get there, we have to finish what I started, which is one more layer. This is gonna make it even thicker with m even more body to it and more texture. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this mod homemade Mod Podge down so that this gauze will stick a little bit. I'm not planning to use much, if any, water at this point for this step. So I'm just going to put that down and stretch it out the best that I can. One of my Boston's is snoring. She's the littlest one and she has the biggest snore. She's a little princess with the giant snore. So I'm taking my black acrylic paint from the Dollar Tree and mixing some brown in that and just a little bit of blue in that because that makes a much livelier, deeper, richer black than just straight up black. And I'm just going to put that over my gauze. My gauze! Yes, indeed, my gauze! Oh, my gauze! May have had too much caffeine today. One can't be sure. I don't know, is there such a thing? Yes, there's such a thing as too much caffeine. So that's what I'm going to do on this layer. And this will give me a chance to cover up that excess and all the things that aren't the right color. This last layer will let me do, do that pretty. When I'm mixing my colors, I take a little bit of black and a little bit of brown and a little bit of blue, and I let them mix here versus on the palette. I want the different colors to show up. I don't want it to just be black. I want it to have different dimension and different highlights and lowlights and, and read 
deep rich color versus just tube black if you want to know more about color i am uh, starting a series of watercolor not watercolor color workshops whether you work in acrylic or oil or watercolor it's going to be done in watercolor but color applies across the board whether it's acrylic and or oil or watercolor color theory is color theory or house house paint or hair color it's all pretty much the same so if you're interested in learning about the colors on your palette i'm not going to give you any specific colors to buy we're going to have you use the colors you already have and get to know them so that you can make the most of the colors you already have what i find happens a lot is people keep buying new colors because they think that the colors are the reason they're getting mud they want vibrant beautiful wonderful colors but they keep getting mud it's not the colors, it's the color mixture. And if you know a few easy, easy secrets, no more mud. Mud on purpose, mud that sings, mud that's beautiful and rich and deep and loaded with personality and wonder, but on purpose, not just, I used a limited palette like they told me and I still got mud. If you're interested in that, I am filming them this week and next, and I will be putting them up on my Patreon for a limited time until I get the whole workshop series built, uh, and it'll be there for a little time after that, and then I'm moving them to my website for a much higher price, because right now, Patreon is, you pick your price, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever value you think you're getting out of it. Uh, you get to pick. And so if you sign up for a month or two and you can cancel at any time, you know, get the screaming good deal on the workshop and then quit if you want. And then they're going to go up on my website for a much higher price. So that's the plan right now, how things are going to go. We'll see how it all works out. Uh, but if that's something you're interested in, link is below. You can sign up for Patreon anytime. You can also cancel at any time. There's lots of freebies right there already, uh, ready and waiting. Even if you don't want to sign up or pay anything, if you if that's not something you're interested in, there's a whole bunch of printables there for you for free. Lots going on. Lots and lots going on. But I am a color junkie. When I did hair, I was a color correction specialist. Uh, although in my small town, all I was doing was correcting color that... I bought this color at Walmart and it turned my hair green. It wasn't, it wasn't very adventurous <laughs> as if it would be in the big city, you know, in a bigger city, people could get into much more trouble. And so I've studied art and color since I was a tiny, tiny kid. I've just grown up with it. And you know, it's like anything. You just think that everybody else knows what you know, since it was common knowledge in my house why wasn't it common knowledge in everybody else's house so i am happy to pass those lessons along i love working with color and there's probably going to be two series this first one is called get to know your palette and uh then I, there's another series already in the works there's a right way and a wrong way to do it and you can make your color sing if you know a few quick secrets so I am jazzed about that series, excited about that series. If that's something that's interesting to you, please go sign up and then then watch Patreon. Uh, you should be notified when the thing, when the videos each go up. And what I'm going to do is just as I get them recorded and edited, I'm just going to post them up on, on YouTube in the order that I do them. Uh, and they're going to start out with the basics. You know, some basic color theory so that we're all, to use a tortured cliche, on the same page as far as what we're talking about. And then it'll build from there. All right. I love how this looks. Love, love, love it. It is exactly what I'd hoped for. So, because Zoom irritates me, I'm just going to bring this up close to you. That shine, uh, A, because it's wet, and B, because it is acrylic paint it will dry with a shine with a sheen 
to it, but not quite shiny, I don't think, because like I said, it's still pretty wet. So I'm going to put this aside to dry, and then, like I said, I have one more step, and we're going to call it good. So that's nice and dry now, but I wanted to show you what I did with all the extra paint that was on my palette. I make... I put some in my composition book of unwasted paint. But when there's a lot of it, and there was, I put the biggest parts back in the jar and then sprayed a little bit of my fun sprays, blue and teal, just for fun, into that brownish black mix that was on the palette. And then just put these down and mopped them up and mopped them up and threw them, all, threw them all around to dry. You see, I got quite a few. And at just the right time, timing is everything with this part, uh, spritz them with just plain water. I think this one almost has a galaxy feel, like naturally. It's just, they just turn out so fun. Each and every one is very different. And when it got, when these darker colors were going away, I think this was one of the first ones. That's why there's so much black in it. And you can see they get lighter a little bit as we go. When there wasn't a lot of color left on, I took my coffee spray. It's just really strong instant coffee in a spray bottle. And I sprayed the palette, what was left on the palette again. And that's where I got these beautiful greens. That instant coffee, there's a lot of green in it. And it m mixed with the blue and the teal that was left on the palette. And I just think they turned out so fun. And I do this, I've shown a couple different times. Uh, instead of all putting all of this paint in the book of unwasted paint, I've been making these wonderful index cards. Uh, and I will be decorating them. Um, I also started a, an altered book of these kind of colors. The cover is pretty neutral and uh, these kind of covers because I have a project just yesterday I hatched a project I've been putting the these colors in here for a while but I, I didn't really know what I was gonna do with it but yesterday but yesterday I hatched a plan Now these two are stuck together you see tore it apart it's just texture it's fine it's all right it's just texture so I, I have a project in mind for this. Who's surprised? Because there's always a project in mind, right? There's a thousand projects just waiting to be done at any given time. I try to do different brush patterns and different designs. On the, and these are all just going to be background pages. So... Lots to do with that extra paint. The reason we're here is to do the last, the last little bit on this faux leather from paper project we've been working on for what seems like ever. get my pretty postcard or index cards out of the way just gotta show you i've amassed just in the past couple of days i've gotten so many uh i have quite a few to play with these colors very excited all right so the last step so this is nice and dry that uh, last layer of gauze on top i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get it for you on camera with all the shine but it sure is pretty. Now the last step, you can be done here. This is 
it's pliable and foldable and traveler's notebook -able. Uh, you can do all kinds of things now with this piece of leather. Uh, for, for me, I like this wrinkled part less than this, so this would be the outside cover for me. But you may feel quite the opposite. You might really like. And I only did the tissue on one side and the gauze on the other just to see how it would work, what it would feel like, what it would look like. Um, so I'm, I might not do the tissue paper on top again, or if I did, I might do it a little bit different. Not quite as many wrinkles. Maybe just try to get it on as an, an extra layer of, of body. Uh, but the last step is to take it from this crunchy... It's, it's flexible, but it's loud and it's crunchy to this soft... The difference between cheap gloves at Walmart and $100 gloves from a boutique, right? The leather is tanned. And I don't have any tanning, leather tanning supplies. So what I have here is a, it's a deep conditioner. I think any hair conditioner will do. I like the deep conditioners personally, uh, because they have a lot of humectant in it. They are, they're moisturizing conditioner. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, just like we did in the beginning, to that first piece of paper. I'm not wetting it or anything. I'm just putting it on. And think of it, think of this piece of faux leather as dry skin, right? You just want to, you just want to get, get this stuff into that dry skin and this takes a little bit of working it in and around and again this you can certainly skip this step if you want to um, but I like the way that it feels I'm going to do both sides because both sides have that Mod Podge, homemade Mod Podge, with a little bit of regular Mod Podge in. So it's sealed up. The color is not coming off on my hands. Of course, it's acrylic and it's dry, so it's not going anywhere. I checked the sheets. None of my gluing is coming apart. It's all staying put. And as you can see, it takes quite a bit. In the first part, you don't need much at all. Uh, <clears throat> in this part, you need a little bit more. Work it around if you want. See how much more pliable it is now? And ooh, it's gonna smell so nice and clean and fresh. I think the heat of your hands helps work it in. The friction makes heat. If you get a little bit too much, like, the stuff is going to just sit in the cracks of that tissue. So I might take something and just wipe off some of the excess. I'm cutting the gauze off, but staying away from the paper. I don't want a harsh edge on that paper. Because, remember, the whole point of the little project that I made this little guy... That I made for my dad uh, was to have it look like it's been around a couple hundred years. I didn't want it to look fresh and new and processed by machine and I wanted it to look old and weathered and handmade on the farm. So I'm, I'm not cutting the edge, I'm just cutting the extra gauze off. It's all an illusion, right? It's just all trick of the eye. So there. It's nice and, and pliable and quiet and not so stiff and rigid. So now you can fold it up and have a little pocket if you'd like. Like that. You could leave the pocket down and fold the sides in and do just a quick 
in there. Just like that. Of course, I'd use vintage coffee dyed paper. I wouldn't use bright white paper in there. You could do traveler's notebook. Fold it pretty skinny and do traveler's notebooks here and here. You could also embellish uh, either side. The gauze side might be easier because there's not as many cracks. I got glitter in there. Opalescent glitter. I don't think that was a thing 200 years ago. You could stencil on top and repaint if you want. If you wanted to, you probably could have, once you had the, stenc the gauze down, uh, stenciled it and then painted it. That That's an option. Uh, you can do all kinds of embellishments on the front. I'm not quite sure exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, in that little guy, I poked holes through where the where the closure was going to go. I just poked two holes through and then I tied a stick. I tied my, my closure around a stick, put it through a hole, and then used that to wrap around and tuck. And I really liked the stick. So I will probably put a stick in here. <laughs> Just because I really liked the way that that looked. Anyway, that is my take on making leather out of paper. It does involve quite a few more steps than just doing a piece of paper. But I think you have, you have a much heavier duty piece of quote unquote leather to work with. Uh, if that's what you're working for for your cover. You want something, I wanted something with a little more body to it than just a really cool looking piece of paper. Because there's next to nothing to this. But this now has the two layers of craft paper. In between those, there's a layer of gauze. On one side of the craft paper, there's tissue paper. On the other side of the craft paper, there's another piece of gauze. It's five layers of stuff here. And ooh, is, it just feels good and it smells good. Go, go. I hope that helps. I hope you take it on. And if you do take a picture and tag me on Instagram, because I'd love to see what you come up with it. Go, go asked if I would do a video on this. And I said, oh, sure. Not knowing how much was going to come up in between. <laughs> Sorry it took so long. Uh, but that's that's life, right? That's life. So here it is. Uh, let me know what you think. Now, have you tried it this way before? Do you have any tips? Something that could be added or taken away? I like this, even though it, it's not, I don't know, I just really like seeing the guts of it, so to speak. Uh, I will probably paint that so that it's not as obvious, but I, I really like it. You have a lovely, lovely crafty day. Love up your beastlies. Not to get the lake. Thank you.